السلام عليكم ازي حضراتكم حابب اشكر الاساتذه الافاضل اساتذتي كلهم على استضافتي في في المؤتمر السنه دي وبهني حضراتكم على نجاح المؤتمر مؤتمر ممتاز بصراحه في النهارده هنتكلم عن في رير كيس كده كانت قابلتنا في الاسم A 43 years old female patient uh, with a five year, uh, years history of diabetes was referred to in Shamsi University OBD for failure uh, of control of diabetes. She had history of polyuria, uh, significant weight loss over 18 kilograms in the past six months. She had uh, a positive family history. She had a positive family history of diabetes and hypertension uh, on oral medications. Her initial management protocol included oral anti-diabetics, uh, initially oral drugs, metformin with glimibride and zinc like lazide, uh, with bioglitazone and metformin, all escalated to full doses with minimal control of blood glucose. The patient was then shifted to mixed insulin with gradually increasing doses up to more than 200 units per day without achieving any significant glycemic control. She was shifted to basal glargin uh, plus polus insulin as part that reached above 300 units per day with poor response. Then trials of add-on uh, oral therapy with insulin like uh, cetagliptin, canagliflozine, bioglitazone, also injectables like liraglutide with metformin were added, uh, remained uncontrolled. Her blood glucose all, always remained over 500 milligram per deciliter persistently in all fasting post and the prebrandial and random samples. The patient was then maintained on insulin isophane 100 units twice daily and regular insulin before meals uh, with no evidence of control of hyperglycemia. We also try, uh, tried a trial of intramuscular insulin, but there was no improvement at all. Later, before she came to our uh, OBD University hospitals, uh, due to poor control, she was prescribed oral prednisolone 5 mg daily with azacyprine 50 mg once daily along with the previous insulin doses for three weeks with no significant improvement. Uh, on examination, uh, the patient was in fair general condition, depressed mode with neck acanthosis negricans. Her uh, body weight was 61 kg and her body mass index was 19.5. Her blood pressure was 160 over 100, and her heart rate 95 beats per minute with respiratory rate 18 uh, beats per minute. Her laboratory profile, uh, for sure glycated hemoglobin was 16%, fasting blood glucose was 780, her postprandial was above 800, her serum fasting insulin was uh, elevated, was 4.2, uh, also with uh, her C-peptide was 2.4, uh, she did serum anti-insulin antibody, which was positive. Her metabolic profile, uh, blood urea nitrogen was 40, creatinine level was 1 mg per deciliter, sodium and potassium, sodium was 130, and potassium was 4.5. She has uh, uh, mild microalbuminuria, 41 uh, gram per deciliter. Uh, the thyroid function tests were within normal range. TSH was 2.4 and 3T4 was 1.1. Also, she did uh, cortisol, uh, both AM and BM uh, was within uh, normal range. She did the autoimmune markers, uh, ANA and anti-DNA, which were negative. Her lipid profile showed LDL cholesterol 158, uh, 158 mg per deciliter and triglycerides was uh, 165. HDL cholesterol was 31 mg per deciliter. During her admission at Anchamps University Hospital, uh, we first initiated her on intravenous insulin pump uh, infusion therapy. Her requirements exceeded 500 units daily with no uh, significant improvement together with intravenous uh, fluid therapy. There was no acidosis regarding her blood gases, but there was resistant uh, ketosis. After reviewing uh, other drug therapy protocols and availability in our hospital, the patient uh, was then prepared to initiate plasmapheresis. 
During the first session, the patient developed severe hypertension up to 190 per 100 uh, millimeter with no ECG changes. The patient was then uh, received two other uh, sessions of plasma versus with two days apart uh, each one. During the second week, the patient was uh, maintained on previous doses of subcutaneous insulin and started to improve, started to develop hypoglycemia, so insulin doses uh, were decreased with gradual monitoring of blood glucose. The patient was then maintained uh, on, uh, on insulin, on isofen, 40 units PID with regular insulin before meals, 25 before each meal, with dabagliflozin, bioglitazone, and metformin. Uh, also, uh, mycophenolate mofetil uh, as immunotherapy were added. During one month's follow-up, uh, blood glucose monitoring uh, improved with average fasting blood glucose, about 140 to 180 milligram per deciliter, and post the brand deal up to uh, 200 uh, to 280 milligram per deciliter. After three months, unfortunately, the patient suffered a uh, relapse with failure of glycemic control by insulin again. She received uh, NIH-suggested immunotherapy, including rituximab and cyclophosphamide with no evidence of control of hyperglycemia, and the patient was referred for another session of plasma pharesis. We'll uh, talk uh, in, in, uh, in two minutes about uh, severe insulin resistance and type B insulin resistance. Severe insulin resistance should be suspected when an individual uh, requires more than two units per kg per day of insulin. A condition where an individual insulin requirement more than three units per kg is considered as extreme insulin resistance. The extreme insulin resistance syndromes can be classified according to the underlying etiology. Uh, either due to anti-insulin antibodies or autoantibodies uh, auto against insulin receptors, mutation in insulin receptor genes, and defects in target cell. This is a summary for different types of insulin resistance. The first part is uh, genetic insulin resistance, uh, insulin receptor mut mutations. The secondary insulin resistance, the common types we know, uh, obesity, stress, pregnancy, Type B insulin resistance syndrome was initially uh, described in female patients and was shown to be associated with plasma uh, uh, antibodies, plasma inhibitor of insulin binding. Subsequently, there was a paper about 20 patients uh, have been studied, mostly have been women uh, of variable age. Almost all patients have fasting hyperglycemia and in these patients up to 100,000 of units per day may be required to normalize blood glucose. Most people with, uh, with uh, type B insulin resistance have an underlying autoimmune disorder. Uh, the most common autoimmune disorders uh, is associated with uh, to, uh, type B uh, insulin resistance is uh, systemic lupus or other uh, closely related uh, lupus disorder. Sometimes B insulin resistance may be a first, type, uh, first sign of autoimmune disease uh, in people who do not have a previous autoimmune disorder. Type B insulin resistance uh, may occur also in people who have certain types of cancer in these types of cancer like lymphoma uh, or multiple myeloma, the cancer cells uh, make abnormal antibody that binds to insulin receptor. The diagnosis of type B insulin resistance, while there is no specific diagnostic test, type B insulin resistance is suspected by very high fasting insulin levels, high levels of adiponectin, uh, low or normal triglyceride levels, pigmented skin uh, in someone uh, with non-autoimmune uh, disorder like acanthosis nigricans, Often very high doses of insulin may be needed in extreme insulin resistance. Highly concentrated insulin analogs can be used in these cases, such as Glargine 300 or Glargine 500. Many immunosuppressive drugs were used, but none of them uh, is, are specifically approved till now to treat type B insulin resistance. Uh, only NIH has proposed uh, a protocol for management of type B insulin resistance, which consists of rituximab anti-CD20 monoclonal antibody, which was given uh, 750 milligram per meter square body surface area in two consecutive uh, doses, two weeks apart. Cyclophosphamide, uh, which is usually initiated with rituximab and given uh, 100 milligram daily by mouse uh, continuously. Uh, and uh, steroids in the form of dexamethasone, 40 milligram daily by mouse for four uh, days or intravenous missile prednisolone for two days concomitantly with, with rituximab. 
Once a patient has achieved remission, uh, the NIH uh, proposes that they were placed on uh, in the maintenance regimen uh, of azacyprine and cyclosporin, azacyprine 100 milligram and cyclosporin 750 uh, milligram daily. Other authors stated that repeated plasma pharesis uh, provided temporarily remark a remarkable effect in glycemic control. Uh, plasma pharesis reduced insulin requirements, but after a while, uh, the effect be becomes less uh, noticeable. The invasive procedures may be consider considered, uh, this invasive procedure can be considered in context uh, of drug availability or contraindication or poor response to previous uh, immunotherapy. Conclusion that we can successfully treat patients with type B insulin resistance with plasma pharesis, uh, but the response was short-lived and need to be repeated. Thank you.